Hello, everyone. Welcome to The Writing Cabin with Tara Benner. I'm author Tara Benner, and this is my cabin. We all need escape into story from time to time. So come on in, sit down by the fire, pour yourself a nice hot cup of coffee, and let's talk books. Now, before we get started today, I want to take a moment to thank my wonderful patrons. Patrons, your support not only funds the creation of new short stories, but it tells me that you enjoy my books so much that you want to support them and me directly. If you're not familiar, Patreon is a platform that allows readers to support authors with a small monthly pledge. Um, if you'd like to join our Patreon family, you can do so over at patreon.com forward slash Labs. I create a brand new short story or piece of writing every single month for my patrons, as well as an exclusive video diary. You can gain access to my entire library of Patreon exclusive stories for just $2 a month, or you can pledge $3 and you will get the ebook version of each new release before it goes out anywhere else. Again, that's patreon.com forward slash Tara Benner Labs. This week's featured book is Warrior Witch, the sixth and final book in the Witches of Mountain Shadow series. The werewolves and vampires are on the brink of war, and Fiona and Gabriel are powerless to stop it. After Sigrid's brutal attack on the local packs, the alphas are on the warpath, and a dangerous coalition of vampires has been slaughtering innocent mortals. Gabriel's old handler Elias has disappeared, but he knows Fiona's secret. Any clue for how to help Fiona died with Gabriel's mother, but Gabriel is determined to uncover his past in the hope of saving their future. When the Brotherhood's sinister new mission is brought to light, it sends shockwaves through the supernatural community. Vampires and werewolves have been slaughtering one another for centuries, but can they set aside their hatred long enough to unite against a common enemy? So normally I would never plug the sixth book in a series for the featured book of the week, but right now we are in the middle of the VIP launch. Um, so what that means is you can get the book from my website and get a free novella, or you can pre-order it to get that free novella. Um, if you're not there yet, if you just listen to Ether Witch, for instance, and you haven't read the rest of the series, you can actually get books one through four in audiobook format at tarabenner.com forward slash audio. Or if you don't want to spend all your Audible credits in one place, you can get a super awesome deal on the ebooks right now. So I have a five book ebook bundle of the first five books that's not available anywhere else on my website. Just go to tarabenner.com forward slash shop. Uh, that's Tara spelled with an H at the end, so you can catch up with the witches. All right, it's time for my little life update that I do every week. And this week's life update is going to be short because I have been stuck at home for about half of the week this week. Um, we had a massive, massive spring snowstorm here, and we got over a foot one day, four to five inches the next day, and snow flurries on the third day. So the day before that, I went out, I got a bunch of groceries. My husband was frantically stocking up on firewood because that's a big part of how we heat our house is with our wood burning stove um, because we're on propane out here and we're off the grid. And uh, yeah, we were stuck here for two full days. My husband couldn't go to work. We couldn't really go anywhere because it was this super wet, heavy, heavy snow. And we live way out in the mountains. Our driveway is a half mile long dirt road with a 600 foot gain in elevation. And so if we get a lot of snow, we are stuck here, even though we have obviously vehicles that are equipped for that. Um, we learned the hard way last year that even our lifted forerunner has its limits. Uh, so until we get a snowmobile, we are stuck here for the duration if we get more than a foot of snow. Um, but it was actually some really nice family time. We took a couple of really beautiful snow hikes with our son, who's nine months old, and he just really enjoyed that. He loves being outside. 
our dogs loved it. Um, our half Malamute loved it a lot more than our mini Aussie. Uh, she was having some trouble with that much snow. Um, we were also trying to save our hummingbirds because our hummingbirds were here, but all the flowers that they would normally get their food from were covered with snow. So we were trying to keep the feeder available and unfrozen. And since we have a lot of hummingbirds still around, I think we saved a lot of them. And yeah, it was really nice. Um, now it's 70 degrees and the snow's mostly melted. So we might be going into spring here. <laughs> finally. I'm not really sure. You can never really be certain uh, in Colorado. But uh, the other thing, I kind of just want to get right into my writing update because a big part of what I've had going on personally this week has to do with a little bit of a crisis that I've had with my writing. And I shouldn't say crisis, just kind of this deep, deep uncertainty and kind of a frantic need to be productive, but simultaneously this inability to move forward. So I'll get into that here in just a moment. Um, But first, the fun parts of my writing update. As I mentioned, this week is the VIP launch for Warrior Witch. Um, And so what I'm doing right now, the official launch is June 6th. So 6-6 for book six. But after I gave it to my patrons, I'm doing a period of um, a special kind of thing I'm doing where if you buy the book directly from my website, you will get Fiona's prequel novella thrown in for free. And so if you just go to my website, um, it's kind of right there on the front page, terabenner.com. Uh, it's, it has a link to get the two book ebook bundle for $4.99, which is the price uh, of where, which on Amazon and everywhere else. But you get the, the prequel novella and you get both of those immediately to read. And so if you're all caught up with this series and you're really excited for the finale, you can go get them both right now. If you would prefer to get them from your favorite retailer, you can pre-order it everywhere. And if you pre-order it, you will still get the prequel novella. There's a little link in the back of the ebook to go download the prequel novella. So a little, just a little extra something for my people who have followed along with this series and are always buying my books to support me. I just wanted to show my appreciation since it's the last book. I'm also going to be doing a Facebook Live the night before the official release. So that's going to be Sunday, June 5th on Facebook uh, at author Tara Bunner. And the time is 9 p.m mountain time. So 8 p.m. if you're on the west coast, 11 p.m. if you're on the far east coast. Uh, And I I realize it's a little bit late, but I had to do it at a time when my son would for sure be asleep. And it's also kind of harking back to the days where I used to go to my midnight Harry Potter releases at Barnes & Noble. To me, there's something fun for something fun about waiting up for the release of a book. So I'll be on Facebook. I'll be answering questions. So if you have any questions about me or the books, you can go ask them then. I'm also going to be giving away some signed paperbacks and some merch. Um, That's the other really fun thing that happened. I officially launched my Witches of Mountain Shadow merch. And if you're watching on YouTube, I am holding up a t-shirt right now. This is actually my husband's shirt. Uh, it's the Tri Blend, which is so soft. I wish I would have gotten the Tri Blend for myself, but I wanted different colors. Um, yeah, so there are t shirts, mugs, magnets, stickers, there's an apron, there's a clock, mouse pads, notepads. Um, some of them are Grimes Family Apothecary themed, some of them are Deja Brew themed. You can find all those on my website at terabanner.com forward slash shop. And as I said, I'm going to be giving away a few fun little things during the Facebook giveaway. So make sure you go to the link at the bottom here and um, RSVP to that. So uh, the last little fun thing I'll mention is I am going to be on the podcast read by the author with Lindsay Sparks on Wednesday. And I was supposed to start my season this past Wednesday, but Lindsay was sick. And so basically 
for the next three to four weeks, I'm going to be reading the entirety of Blood Ties, which is the Witches of Mountain Shadow prequel from Gabriel and Wesley's point of view. Um, I'll put a link to that as well. Okay, so I feel that I've uh, kind of talked around it enough. I need to kind of get into my little writing crisis that I've been in this week. Um, I, I've i both dreaded coming to talk about this on the podcast this week, and I was also looking forward to the opportunity to kind of get it off my chest. Um, the last several weeks, I've been talking about the spinoff to Which is the Mountain Shadow that I am writing. And from the very beginning, I had a really strong idea for this series. Everything went super smoothly. I wrote kind of the nugget of what the book was going to be about called the blurb. And from that, I expanded it into a full outline. And I even did a rough outline of what the entire series is going to be. And I started writing it. I have about 28,000 words written on the first book. And it was about, it was going to be about 70,000 words. And so I'm very nearly halfway through with the first draft. Um, but I, a few days ago, I guess toward maybe over the weekend, I had gotten into a scene that was kind of tricky for me to get out of. And I didn't really want to be there. (laughs) And I, I was kind of stuck on it. And so I went over and wrote something else for my patrons for a couple days. And I came back to it. And this past Tuesday, I was able to finally get away after being snowed in. I have ukulele on Tuesdays and my husband came home early. So I was able to go into town and ride at this little coffee shop in Woodland Park that I like before ukulele. And now that I have a child, getting out to ride by myself at a coffee shop is like my happy place. And I hit my word count goal for the day. I felt really strongly about the scenes that I wrote. Um, But as I was driving home, I just, something about it was not sitting right with me. And as I was going, I kept thinking about other series, other books that I wanted to be writing rather than the one that I actually was writing. And I, I felt kind of like I was cheating on my characters a little bit because, you know, I've been working on this idea for weeks now. I've outlined it. I've really been thinking about the characters and their motivations and their relationship with other characters in the series and who I want to bring back and how I want to do it. And then I've been writing, I've been working really hard to get all these words down, but I, I just had this feeling like I wanted to be somewhere else. And so my mind was wandering to this other paranormal series with two characters that kind of just came out of left field and it kept wandering to this high fantasy story that I've been thinking about for about as long as I've been thinking about the spinoff. And I was like, oh, like, why am I, why is my mind going to all these other places? Like, why do I not want to stay with Sloane and Senwin uh, for this, you know, this mental space that I'm supposed to be occupying right now? And I came home and I was kind of just... I wasn't in a bad mood, but I was just kind of restless and frantic and kind of all over the place. And I told my husband about this and he said, well, it doesn't really sound to me like you want to write this spinoff. And I said, no, you know, I want to write this spinoff because, you know, I had this idea and um, I told myself I was going to stick with Paranormal for another series because... Witches of Mountain Shadow was a big departure for me. Before Witches of Mountain Shadow, I had written dystopian, post-apocalyptic, sci-fi. And, uh, you know, I was determined to stay in my lane this time because I've made, at least for the conceivable future, I've made the permanent shift away from dystopian sci-fi to fantasy and specifically paranormal. And if you're not super familiar with the genre distinctions paranormal fantasy and urban fantasy, those tend to be your stories with witches, werewolves, vampires, set in a modern setting, usually. And then you have high fantasy or epic fantasy, which is more your Lord of the Rings type stuff. So dragons, elves, castles, um, trolls, 
dwarves, all that kind of stuff. And my husband said to me, well, you keep, have, you've been saying that for weeks that you really want to write a high fantasy story. And I was like, yeah, that's true. But, you know, I, I need to stick with paranormal and I want to capitalize on the momentum that I'm getting with Witches of Mountain Shadow by writing the spinoff so that existing fans of the series have something to read next. And uh, it just you know, he's like, it just feels forced. It feels like you're trying to make something happen that, that isn't working for you right now. And I said, yeah, <laughs> that's true. Um, because you know, I don't, what I don't want is for it to be like full house and then fuller house, the reboot or really any re I don't want it to feel like a reboot. That's not as good as the first thing. And I, uh, something about it was just, not working for me. It kind of felt like I was playing a chord, but one of my strings was out of tune, um, to go with the ukulele metaphor. And I couldn't figure out what that string was. I feel like maybe it had to do with the male main character because he is this very honor driven character who is chivalrous and kind of this old school warrior, almost like a knight type figure. And he is thrust into this modern setting, um, almost like a reverse kid in King Arthur's court situation, um, or like a Kate and Leopold situation, I guess you could say. And I've never written a character like him. All of my male protagonists have been either kind of bad boys or these enigmatic kind of darker characters that open up as the series goes on. And so he's just, he's very unlike any one I've written before. And the other thing that I think was coloring my experience of the spinoff was that, you know, Mountain Shadow is this town that I've created. Fiona loves her town in which is a mountain shadow. She loves all the small town festivals and she has all her friends and her little business. And that's just kind of the space that she thrives in. But Sloane, it's like she's going back to her hometown years after graduating high school and she doesn't really want to be there. And so <laughs> that I think was affecting my experience of it. And at my husband's suggestion and my own deep needing to do something else, I have set it aside in favor of a high fantasy novel that has been beating around in my head for weeks. And for the last two days, I've given myself permission to write on that instead. And it has been such a fun experience. It's been such a different experience because I just feel like it flows and it's so much fun. It's this whole other world, like this whole new sandbox for me as a writer. And that's, that to me is really rewarding because I love world building. Like it's my favorite part of writing. And, you know, with the spinoff, the world was pre-made for me. I just had to walk in and, and move these new characters around in it. And so that kind of took a little bit of the fun out of it for me. My husband suggested that since there is a big time gap between Witches of Mountain Shadow and the spinoff, that there should be a time gap in real time between those. And so I can kind of use that as further justification for what I want to do. Um, and the other thing I'm trying to... I'm trying to be kind to myself here because I've been so focused the last few months and I've had all these big goals for myself. I wanted to get two or three books written for the spinoff and then release them in rapid succession. So I wanted to have a release on October 1st and one on October 31st and have it be kind of a big deal. And that's probably not going to happen now. Um, but what I keep telling myself that I had forgotten, but now I remember, is it's always a really hard, awkward time for me between book series. Um, I remember before I wrote Ether Witch, there were a few weeks in there where I had started trying to write two other books and I had words written, I had concepts. Uh, I was trying to write something dystopian and I just 
couldn't. It was the beginning of the pandemic and I couldn't make myself write anything dystopian. And that's how I ended up going on to Which is the Mountain Shadow. And I loved it. And uh, thinking back to like three series ago when I was between Lawless and the Elderon Chronicles, I want to say, maybe. Um, I, I remember writing a little bit, or maybe it was between The Fringe and Lawless. I can't remember. But I, <laughs> I had written like 20,000 words of this whole other book that's a concept I still really like that has to do with cryogenically freezing people and then waking those people back up in the future. Um, but I, I just, I got stuck and I couldn't finish it. And I think what I need to remember is whenever I finish a big five, six book series, I need a period of time to kind of chill out and cleanse my palate and play a little bit creatively to decide what I really want to write next, as opposed to what I did this time, which is predetermining what I'm going to write next before I even finish the last book of the series. So I'm officially announcing that I have put the spinoff on pause. I will still probably write it, but I'm putting it on pause and I am writing a new high fantasy story that is a lot of fun and a lot different from what I've written in the past, but I think you're going to love it if you are a fan of my work. So I'm not going to say any more just now because I don't want the spark to die (laughs) uh, by talking it to death, but that's what I'm working on. So that concludes the end, or that concludes the super long writing update. It's time for what I'm reading this week. And I am listening to A Court of Wings and Ruin by Sarah J. Mass. That is the third book in the A Court of Thorns and Roses series. And the biggest letdown so far has been that is a different narrator for book three. Um, it is not narrated by Jennifer Akita, who did the first two books in the series. And I just, I loved her. I loved her performance. When I hear Feyre's voice in my head, I hear it as her. And the new narrator is perfectly good. I just, I'm not used to her voice still. And so that's something to keep in mind if you're an audiobook lover and you want to listen to that series. Don't get too attached to Jennifer Akita because she is not the narrator for book three. Um, I am enjoying it, but I'm back to being annoyed with Feyre. I think that is a theme with this series that I spend a period of time being super annoyed with Feyre and then I can enjoy the book fully. And it has nothing to do with her being whiny or a bad character. It's just the situation that she has put herself in, which I get that it's fully necessary, but I'm not getting to see like as much of my favorite characters as I would like, except for Lucian. And there's kind of like a weird dynamic with him that I won't go into. Uh, (laughs) It's just weird. I'm not, this is my first series I've read by Sarah J. Mass, and I can't quite like wrap my head around her as an author. She's a fantastic, fantastic writer and a fantastic storyteller, but there's just little quirks to her style of storytelling and the characters that she writes that I just, it's different from what I usually enjoy. And so, um, but yeah, it's, it's a very enthralling series. I highly recommend, well, I mostly highly recommend it so far. (laughs) The other thing I'm reading on my Kindle is Fireheart by Emma Hamm. I usually have two books at least going at once, one on my Kindle, one audiobook. And Fireheart is a high fantasy story with a dragon shifter character and this half elf character who's kind of reluctantly drawn into a rebellion against the king. Um, it's dual perspective. So there's chapters from the female protagonist point of view and the male protagonist point of view, which I really like the dragon shifter character is my favorite. Um, and his, you know, he's just a really good character. I go back and forth on the female protagonist, but overall it's a very entertaining, um, fun and kind of unique book really because she has some little aspects to her world building that I've never seen before so she has these magical night robots is the best way I can describe them they're kind of almost 
a magical version of AI nights. It's, it's very weird, but very cool. And so um, if you're kind of looking for a little something different, a little kind of light, quick, fun, high fantasy story, I definitely would recommend Fireheart. Um, yeah, that's about all I have for you this week. But before we go, let's check the mailbox. And this week, I have a very nice YouTube comment from Maritza. She writes, um, oh, this comment was on the video of the Ether Witch audiobook. Maritza writes, this has been a lovely read. I love how you put facts and fiction together. Keep on writing. Don't let anything hold you back. And I really have to thank you, Maritza. I needed to hear that this week. Um, if you, dear listener, have any questions you'd like for me to answer on the podcast or comments you want me to read on the show, you can send them to tarabenner at gmail.com. You can also post them on any of my social media channels. I am at author Tara Benner on Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. On YouTube, I am Tara Benner author. That's Tara with an H at the end. So go to my YouTube channel, make sure you subscribe. You can also post your questions in our secret reader group on Facebook, Tara Benner's Reader Revolution. Huh, lots of places to find me these days. That's all I have for you this week, but feel free to stay in my cabin for as long as you like. We can drink all the coffee. You can crack open a good book, hopefully one of mine, and have a wonderful weekend. <laughs>